Hello and welcome to my art studio. Ta-da! Um, as you can see, I have not tidied up. What I thought I would do, I it was sort of the reason I was putting off doing a studio tour so badly was because I thought, well, I really have to tidy up because they won't be able to see uh, anything of what's in here and they'll just be like how can you make anything sensible at all in that chaos and so I'll have to tidy up and then I'll have to film it and then that'll you know take forever so what I thought I would do instead is sort of bring you along while I do the different stages of tidying up and that way you'll get a better idea of the kind of things I keep in here the kind of uh, storage space that there is um, and you can ask questions. I have no idea. I'm going to try and edit this together as a sort of vlog uh, with different sections on different days. Uh, there is no way I'm going to tidy all of this up uh, tonight. It's about um, seven o'clock in the evening. I'm going to go and watch the final of The Sewing Bee in a couple of hours. So what we're going to get is what I can do in that time. Do not worry, you will not have to watch me tidying up in real time for two hours and more. Um, I will show you interesting bits. I'll maybe try and put the camera somewhere uh, where it can kind of see what I'm doing as I go along and then do some speeded up sections possibly um, and maybe do sort of voiceover of some of that that I can add on later explaining what's going on. So I think that's the plan. I'm, I'm sort of looking around wondering where on earth to start yeah I mean I'll just tell you what you can see in the background over there is my Ikea pegboards which have various storage boxes you can see they kind of look empty that's because everything that should be there is currently in a pile on the big table you can see my iron my sewing machine some new fabric that I've just brought over here box of sewing patterns um all sorts of stuff in fact before i get going i am going to show you this fabric because i'm hoping that i'll have sewn it up before the time uh, i get to do my next sort of haul and roundup video so this is viscose fabric uh woven viscose um i'm gonna make another dress similar to the william morris one that i made before um, but it's got, you. oh, it is quite transparent. I might need to think about lining it. Anyway, you can see it's got this beautiful, bright leaf pattern all over it with glorious colours and uh, designs and shapes. I don't know how big the repeat is. I'm guessing enormous. Um, so it may not match up perfectly with the pattern matching. This was from Rainbow Fabrics in Kilburn. It was sold to me as a three metre end of bolt piece for £11.99. And then when it arrived, it said on the packing note, there's actually 3.3 metres. So it will be more than enough uh, to make a really nice flowy summer dress. So I'm going to try and get that sewn up probably this coming weekend. So I'll have that finished garment perhaps to show you uh, on the next video. So where am I gonna put you? I think I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start over at the filing cabinet. So I'm gonna bring you with me and find somewhere to put you while I have a go at that. So I'm down on the floor here next to my uh, filing cabinet. There is this, which is, I can't remember. It might be pattern tracing paper. Oh no, it's, yes, well, so it's, um, you can see dotted pattern tracing paper, a 10 metre roll of that. Uh, I have a better place to store that, so that can go. Uh, let's pop that over there for the moment. Okay, in the bottom drawer of my filing cabinet, I'm not gonna take you through this, this is where I keep my actual filing um, of important documents. So that is not really a craft thing. Second drawer of the filing cabinet, couldn't really remember what's in here. And now I'm looking at it, I'm kind of, ah, surprised to discover what's in here. But it's, it's not a bad surprise, it, it is a surprise. It is um, paper. Oh, and some storage files and more storage files and here 
some sewing magazines and I think that's a pattern at the back okay so this is interesting I am definitely going to de sorting out of this so I think this may be our starting point there we go right sitting on the floor properly so I'm going to take all of these out I think and reorganize Okay, so everything is out of there now. What I'm going to do is sort out papers that are for art. So there are some of the papers in here that I would use for, and the reason I've kept them, is for collaging an art project. So this folder that I'm currently looking at has got a whole lot of different coloured tissue paper. Now, I've got a stash of different coloured tissue paper in the house. And I think this is going to go over there. So that can go in one pile. Things to come out of the craft hut. So the, the art studio, it's in my garden. I think I will have put in by now some pictures of what it looks like from the outside. It is a converted shepherd's hut that I bought, oh, 12 years ago, 11 years ago, something like that. I've had it for a while. Um, it began life as an office space uh, when I was uh, working. Since I have no idea what this is, I think I can probably get rid of it. Checklist for leaving the church. I don't think I need that. So let's put that pile of rubbish. Um, yes, at the time I didn't have a sort of external office space. And so I, um, this was my office and all the bookshelves had books on and that kind of thing. Uh, I now have an office space. My new work uh, paid for me to ha have a little rented office in a business park in town. And so now it is my, this is all admin stuff. This should be in the other drawer. Definitely all of this. Okay, that's good. That can all go in the bottom final drawer. Um, yeah, so then this became my craft space, which is just brilliant. Um, having somewhere where I don't have to put the sewing machine away every time I want to work or eat or have people around. Um, yeah, it just makes all the difference in the world. Although, as you will see on a later video, there is quite a lot of craft stuff still in my house. Now, these are bits from old sketchbook work I think I'm not sure I need to keep these well no I really don't these were I've done this project I've used the bits that I needed to from it and those are just the leftover pages of the magazine that is tracing paper so that's a thing I'm going to keep this is a uh, brochure of one of my local national trust places Whitwick Hall it's an arts and crafts house uh, near Wolverhampton. Um, and when I was studying a few years ago for uh, a textiles course, one of the tasks we had to do was go and uh, look at some objects in an actual collection. And so I wrote to Whittock Manor and said, could I come and do that? And it was brilliant. They let me like actually touch. I had to put on like proper white gloves, but they let me actually touch. There was a, a May Morris bedspread and some arts and crafts cushions and I can't remember what the third thing was but anyway so it was really fun so I, I had the the cat the you know whatever this is guide um so that I could take pictures from that to illustrate the things that I'd seen um but it's also the kind of thing that's nice to keep and never use right sewing magazines I'm gonna make a separate pile for those because there's more of those that aren't in here yet and it's already getting complicated patterns that came with sewing machines they are uh, sewing magazines I don't have lots of sewing machines I think patterns wherever they came from are all going to go that's basically what's in the top drawer of the filing cabinet so that's a different category and then some of these, you know, when you, um, 
print and taper pattern it just takes an enormous wadge of space so anyway that is a printed pattern this is a printed pattern as well and last time I did proper organizing of my patterns I'd come across this system and I really like it these plastic bags they don't fasten they just open at the end and these kind of cards that are just there to give it a bit of sniffing you buy them from the kind of shop that sells comics comics that collectors buy and these are sort of sized to fit your you know vintage batman comic in it or whatever but they work really well for printed sewing patterns that you've taped and whatever or even ones you've purchased that you can't get back in the envelope you can put them in here i normally put a little label in saying what the pattern is but i don't seem to have done that on this one so we are going to have to sort some of that out as well right uh oh sewing patterns sewing patterns sewing patterns hoping never to need that sewing pattern again but we'll keep it just for the moment Fordler, this is um some artwork that i did years and years ago this is sort of it was with the teacher of the art class that i go to but this was not the normal art class i wonder if this was like an extra saturday morning thing maybe or a sort of one-off set i don't really remember anyway it can all go back in that folder for the moment good well we've got lots of empty file folders so that's a good thing what have we got in here okay that is random collaging papers so, you know, my collaging papers can be all kinds of things. This kind of little spotty thing, which I notice I've done some maths on the back of. Random bits of coloured paper, torn bits of paper. Um, things with different textures. Things where I've done artwork that I haven't really liked. I will have cut up and put in here. Um, some old scrapbooking papers. I've got a lot of very ancient uh, knitting patterns from my grandparents shop I'm going to tell you more about my grandparents shop uh, later um, when we get to the part uh, of fun the piece of furniture that I've got here that came from their shop and then I'll tell you more about that right this is kind of plain paper that's plain paper that's really ruined plain paper ordinary lined paper more plain paper pad of plain paper uh, here we are. Here is the, the big stash of ancient knitting patterns. There you go. I mean, classics. Who, who doesn't want to dress their baby in that these days? So uh, maybe one day we'll go through uh, some of these and I don't know, maybe I'll do a giveaway if anyone's interested in them or I don't know. The, the, I do have a slightly sentimental feeling about them so I'm not getting rid of them just throwing them away but I'm probably never knitting from them either okay that's more collagey paper that is oh that's fun this is a little collection of postcards that I've picked up at various uh, museums and art galleries you can see some Rothko <laughs> classic knitting pattern uh, that was something, a postcard someone sent to me, uh, but I just thought that was fun to keep. Um, yeah. Yeah, another exhibition guide. I'm going to keep that. So that's good. Da, da, da. Okay. And then what's in this last section? Oh, okay. So this is this is collage papers as well. So these are things that where we've done printing on them, bits that are just sort of swatches of paint, but that would be good to cut up and use. More, a bit more tissue paper. Um, I do love collage. I think I might have mentioned that before. That's just plain paper. Filming on my iPad, and it's slightly tricky to get it propped up at an angle where you can see me. Uh, you'll see, by the way, I solved the uh, translucent top problem by, uh, this is a purchased vest and uh, it seems to be working 
very adequately. Right, so that's random bits of collaging paper. And these, I think, are all empty file folders. So we've got a lot of file folders, which is good. And I think I am going to transfer my whole collection of sewing magazines into this drawer and then see where we're at. Okay, so that is all the sewing magazines done. It's not. There's another pile of them uh, over in the house, but it's all the sewing magazines from here done. And what I've done, um, I have organized them, mostly according to magazine. So I've got a couple of ones where I've got one-off magazines, but then I've got a whole section that is simply sewing. I've got half a dozen of those. Uh, sew magazine I've only got one of those but I think I've got some more love sewing now honestly if you had said to me Ross do you get love sewing magazine I would have said to you I've never heard of love sewing magazine but apparently I've got four issues of it so that, that's that um something called easy sew never heard of that I mean I say that I bought it so yeah uh, and I've got one copy of a birder magazine I know there are others there's, I've got at least one or two Ottobras, um, and maybe some others. Can't really remember. So anyway, I think that's going to work quite well. Um, uh, I might try and get organised by putting them in in date order. But I might not. And um, that's nice, good, right. So, but there is still quite a lot of space in there, and I think there will be even once I've brought the ones from the house over. So what I think is going to go next is going to be the start of the patterns. In fact, I'm going to start by putting the old knitting patterns back in. Because for the moment, that is where they are going to live. Um, and like I say, I may do something with them in the future. But for the moment, they just need a safe place to live. And that is that place. Next thing I think is going to be sewing patterns and what I do with my sewing patterns I have them divided up according to type of finished objects so household things I've got a handful of like baby and, and child patterns to make for friends um, and then tops dresses skirts trousers um, and so on so I'm going to do a bit of sorting out of those this will involve going into the top drawer as well as this bottom drawer it may be that for example household things and baby things come in here because those are, are quite specialist uh, for me I, I rarely look at those patterns so they could easily go at the back of this drawer and then sort of garments for me that are the things I sew most often could go in this top drawer so I think I'm going to turn the video off at this point do some of that sorting out and then I'll come back and show you where I get to So this is currently where I've got to. I've gone through all the patterns that were in the filing cabinet and the box of patterns that were sitting on top of the, the main table. There are quite a lot of other patterns in other places. This box I have refilled. These are all the random bits of patterns that are not currently in a pattern envelope. So I need to go through that pile and either find pattern envelopes for them put them back in their pattern envelopes or make a new envelope. The rest of these are organised by type. So we've got coat. I actually do have one other coat pattern that I know, yeah, that I know is still in the filing cabinet to go with that. Then we've got tops. Now you'll see this pattern is a good example. Lots of uh, particularly sort of big fall patterns, but other pattern companies as well will have multiple types of garment on a pattern. So what I've done is I've picked the garment I think I am most likely to make and put it on that pattern. So in this case, I think I'm quite likely to make that top, but I'm pretty unlikely to make the dress. 
So that's gone in my tops pile. There's quite a lot of those. Over in the corner, we have skirts, surprisingly few skirts. I wear a lot of skirts, but I mainly make them without patterns. Um, so those are skirts. These are trousers. Uh, what have we got here? Oh, these are sort of, um, in fact, that's on the wrong part. That should be over here. And over here. And now I'm wondering if I've got that wrong. Yeah, no, that's right. These are tops. Let's put that on there. And here we go. And then these are under here somewhere. Oh dear, got all confused. Anyway, lots of tops, lots of tops. Here we are. These are cardigans, you see, with an actual label on it, and sort of jumpers, sweatshirts, that kind of thing. Whereas these are lighter weight, both stretch and woven tops. Next, we've got a little pile of uh, patterns for bags. And then over here, the biggest pile of all is dresses. Good. I've just been doing that thing of talking to myself for about 10 minutes before I realised I hadn't switched the video on. So where we're at, I have picked up all the patterns off the floor. I've um, put the ones that I'm keeping back in the filing cabinet. I'll take you through that in a moment. The piles that you can see uh, on top of the filing cabinet, there's a pile and there's another one behind it. Those are all the ones that I'm getting rid of. Some will have to go to recycling, some can be given away. The pile in front of me here, yeah, these are all the bits that need putting together in patterns, putting into envelopes, putting away. They are basically the patterns which I have been working on lately. Um, so they should all be complete, I think. One or two maybe uh, need to go in with the rest of the pattern in the filing cabinet. Some I've got envelopes from that I can see already. Some I know need envelopes making up, but I've got these bags and the cards and I can do that. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. Um, I just wanted to show you this one pattern from my stash. This is a vintage Vogue pattern. It's based on a 1953 Vogue pattern. This is the dress that I made to wear at my brother's wedding. It was uh, not quite 10 years ago he got married. It was in December, uh, so it's freezing. So I made this out of beautiful printed uh, gold silk fabric that I found. Um, and I knitted a little cardigan to go with as well because winter. Um, and it was really stunning. I will see if I can find a photo of myself wearing the dress that I made. I know I've also got scraps of the fabric that I use still in my stash here. So when I show you going through my stash of fabric, which is going to take a long time, uh, I will try and remember to point that out as well. But I loved this pattern. I loved, loved, loved wearing it. It was so flattering and so beautiful. I did a a proper petticoat and some trim around the petticoat and it was just it was beautiful I really really loved wearing that so I thought I'd show you that I don't anticipate ever making this again but I'm keeping the pattern just because so that's the first one that we'll need to get back in the sash okay um I I don't think this is going to be very interesting to watch so I'm going to do this and then I'll get all of these finished and put away and then I'll show you how I've organised them in the filing cabinet. I did record this section with me talking, but honestly, the filing cabinet is so loud that I've come back to do a voiceover. So at the moment, I'm just showing you the piles that I will be giving away. There's a few books in the, under the right hand pile, but um, those are not being given away. They just happen to be there. I'm going to go through uh, in a little bit those sections. So now we're going down to look at what's actually made it into the filing cabinet. Sorry for the slightly dodgy camera work. It's quite hard to film and uh, hold up. So this first section is where I've got some underwear patterns and also a swimsuit pattern. Um, I've made this and I really like it and I might well make more of that. Uh, so this is bags, household items, there's an apron pattern, Christmas stocking pattern, those kind of things in there. This next section, most of these are uh, digital printouts, they're baby and children's patterns. Um, I don't have loads, but it's nice to have one or two if you want to make gifts for people. Those are my collage papers, which I am going to sort out and put somewhere else, I think. The knitting patterns you've seen, 
And then the rest of this drawer is all of the different magazines that I've got. Um, again, uh, you've seen those already. So now up to the top drawer. The first thing is this section of trousers, a couple of patterns that I've made already, that simple suit pattern you've seen uh, in one of my roundup videos. I've not tried the four in one pattern, but I like the look of it. Next section we've got is the jumpers, sweatshirts, cardigans. I've made several of the neige sweater and I really like it. A um, couple of, of sort of sweatshirty patterns, juniper cardigan pattern that I've made a few of. Then this is uh, jersey knit top, so some long sleeve, some short sleeve, the little camisole. Um, that simplicity pattern, I have made multiple garments from that actually, but I decided the top was the one that I was most likely to go back to. Uh, so various things in there. Uh, then these are woven fabric top patterns. This Ashling blouse is the one you've seen uh, several times that I've made with the, the sort of square neck and then the scoop neck and the frill. That's the new pattern that I haven't uh, tried yet that you saw in a haul video. Um, the Imogen pattern I made a couple of last year and I've not yet made any for this summer, but I might well. I really liked it. Um, yeah, so various. Uh, this has got a jersey pattern and a woven pattern in it, um, confusingly, but I put it in uh, with the ones that I think I'm most likely to try. I think I've already made the woven pattern from it once actually. These are dresses made from woven fabric, some of which I've used, some of which I haven't. Uh, you see the spring dress there that I showed you last week. Uh, the cape pattern, I've made lots of those. Uh, these are pinafore patterns. Um, I made a lot of pinafores in the last 12 months. Uh, that's the Cotton and Seal Sunday set. The uh, Made by Jack's Mum Penelope. There's both versions of the Jennifer Lauren Ivy Pinafore. I've made the one with the full skirt and the one with the A-line. I've not yet made this McCall's pattern, but I really want to. I think that's a nice uh, silhouette. Then we've got a couple of jersey patterns. That's the Alice dress, came with a magazine. Uh, and the Nina Lee Mayfair dress, which I've made and really like and plan to make maybe one or two more. This is the pattern for the Sophia trench coat. I made one of these three or four years ago and I still wear it. And then this is the Ilford jacket uh, that you've seen me talk about in previous videos. So in the last section of this video, I showed you all my sewing patterns. They were all finally filed and put away in the filing cabinet. What I've got here to go through right now is all the patterns that I am not keeping. And I'm gonna go through and put them into three sections, I think. There's the straight into the bin, there's the possible giveaway on YouTube, and there's charity shop, which there may not be that much distinction between the last two, we will see. So I'm afraid anything that's been used like this pattern is just going into the bin. I just don't think anybody wants a used pattern. This is very old anyway. I've no idea how long I've had it, but a long time. So that is just going in the bin. This is easy. Now, two in one maxi dresses, perfectly good pattern from thread count, sizes eight to 24. I haven't made it, I wouldn't make it. I don't really wear maxi dresses, but it's a good pattern. I think that goes in the giveaway pile. The Vivian dress, okay, this is another one that came with a magazine. It doesn't say whether it's from a design company, maybe just printed for simply sewing, that's all it says. Light to medium weight fabrics. I think it's a little bit, well, I don't know, I think it's a little bit shapeless. This uh, fabric with the green with the print, I've seen in a lot of shops this season. And to be honest, I've seen it in the sale section in quite a number of shops as well. So if you love it, you may well still be able to find it and you may be able to get it at quite a good price. I think I'm going to put that in the charity shop pile. New look pattern came with Sew Magazine. I'm going to guess quite a while ago. I have no memory of this at all. Well, it can't be that long ago. It's got a Pinterest thing on the back. Um, I think that's a charity shop pattern. I don't really know what the distinction is between charity shop and giveaway patterns. It's just instinctive. Okay, Emma Pinafore. I think I did think about making this, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. Um, I don't think it's really a pinafore dress, to be honest. It's a sleeveless dress, which I suppose if you want, you can put a t-shirt underneath. 
There's a long version as well as a short version. Um, I'm, I'm going to say giveaway. Okay, this I've had in my stash forever. I've never made it. I'm pretty sure it's never come out of the thing. I'm going to say Paris Shop. Now this one is relatively new. The only reason this is in the pile is because for some reason I've got two. I don't really know how that happened, but I definitely don't need two. It's a simple camisole, jersey fabric. I think it'll be really comfortable for the summer. I think I might well make some, but I'm going to put that in the giveaway. Simplicity, K8384. It's got uh, various dress options and also a top. I think the top is really quite pretty and I might, you know, I could imagine wearing it. Um, but this only comes in sizes, American sizes nonetheless, but 6 to 14. I am not even in American sizes a 14. I'm going to put that in the giveaway. Super ancient pattern with, with the price written on the front. Um, I don't know whether I've used it, but it's torn. I'm going to throw it away. Unused pattern. This is... Uh, Simplicity came with a, an edition of Sew magazine. It's got a jacket, a camisole, a skirt and trousers. Sizes US 8 to 16. Half a chance I might get in the bigger size, but probably not. I'm going to put it in the giveaway. Prima pattern. Um, so I used to buy Prima magazine like 20, 25 years ago when it came with patterns in the magazine. Now I don't think it does. And I'm not quite sure, to be honest, where this has come from. Maybe I did buy it once, but I think you had to you now have to send off for the patterns. And I'm sure I wouldn't have done that. Anyway, it's wide leg trousers. You can see the line drawing on this side. Uh, nice version with a tie, um, a sort of a more cropped length and a full length. I think they're quite nice, but I've got wide leg trouser patterns that I already use. Um, I don't think a charity shop would take this, so I'm going to put it in the giveaway. I don't know whether anyone actually wants it. If you win the giveaway and you don't want it, you can just throw it away. Project Runway pattern. I love Project Runway. Uh, it makes me very sad that it's quite hard to watch it in the UK. Anyway, uh, Simplicity K1418. I've never made this pattern. I've never opened the envelope. It's a it's a cute pattern. Um, I don't think it's really ever going to be my style. I'm going to put that in the charity shop, I think. New look K6263. I don't know why. I, I definitely bought this one. I don't know why. I don't think that neckline's at all flattering on me. Um, maybe it suits you. I'm going to put that in the giveaway. This. Well, it looks like I've definitely got this out of the envelope and it's probably in a bit of a state. I think maybe I did make it. A number of years ago, I went on a cruise on the queue, Queen Mary 2, and we had to have a lot of formal evening wear. And I think I did make it. I'm never going to make it again. I don't think I can give the pattern to anyone else in this state. I'm going to reclaim my storage bag, but I'm going to put the pattern to throw away similarly this one I definitely made this I, I remember wearing this I like the dress but I'm never going to make it again I've used the pattern it's going in the pile the spray cavati is another prima pattern uh, this one uh, again easier to see in the line drawings you can see it's a wrap dress a slightly shorter tunic version um, and sleeved and long sleeved and shorter sleeved versions I think it's quite pretty. I think it's quite pretty. I don't really like wearing proper wrap dresses. I'm going to put this one in the giveaway. Um, kimono wrap dress. Now it obviously did come with a sewing magazine, but I must have bought it in a charity shop for fifty p. I don't really know why, because as I just said, I don't really like wearing wrap dresses. I'm going to get put that in the giveaway. The Esme dress. Came with a magazine, not my style. Give away. Give away. Charity shop. Another Project Runway one. Have I used this one? Let's find out. I don't think I have. Oh, maybe. Oh, no, I have. Okay, well, we'll get rid of that. That's easy. The jewel dress. Again, from a magazine. 
Again, not my style at all. I'm going to put that in the charity shop. New look. K6302. Never opened. Not, not my style at all, ever. I don't, I don't know why I've got that. Anyway, charity shop. Okay, this one. This one is ancient. Again, you can see I bought it in a charity shop for 50p. Um, so somebody's opened it and used it, not me. I kind of love it though. I kind of love this um, pinafore with a slightly more flowing skirt. So I'm keeping that actually. I don't know. What, I don't think it should be in this pile. I'm going to keep it. It won't fit me. It's a size 16, but that's a really ancient size 16. Um, but I might well be able to size up and do something with that. So actually... I'm keeping it. It's good, isn't it? The Lauren set. This is a long jersey dress. Would never wear that. And a, a sort of roll neck top. I don't really love a roll neck. I've never opened this. I'm going to put that in the giveaway. Simplicity. K1202. Came with Sew Magazine. I mean, what do you get? You get the top, the skirt, a pair of trousers... And a jacket. Yeah, so all of those things that you can see, in fact. I mean, would suit someone who works in an office? Yeah, not me. Uh, that can be a charity shop. This is an ancient Butterick pattern. Nine fast and easy skirts. Charity shop. I've never made any of those. Lorna skirt came with Love Sewing. I just, I don't love the, the bias the way the bias looks on that at all. I'm going to put that in the charity shop pile. Oh, empty. Love sewing Butterick pattern, Butterick uh, 6657. I can definitely see some people looking really cute in these summer dresses. I think they're quite stylish at the moment. They're not going to suit me. And yeah, I've never opened it. I'm going to put that in the giveaway. This is another one that is very ancient. I've used this. I can't imagine what I made from it, but apparently I did. Um, anyway, throw it away. This one I've also used a skirt pattern. I think I made this version. I can't see myself making that again. And I, I'm not going to wear culottes ever. Uh, this pattern, I, I'm denied about this. I actually do quite like this skirt pattern still. Um... Still slightly on on the fence about that, and there's a camisole pattern that I quite like the look of as well. I do you know I'm keeping that. Good, right? Oh, Lula Bell frilly knickers. Yeah, no. I've I've had various goes at, at making knickers. I've never actually tried making this pattern. I just I'm not going to. They're not the kind of knickers I like. Um, I've never used it. I think that can go to the charity shop. For our pattern, I have used this. I can't get it to fit. That can throw away. Used, throw away. Not used, charity shop. Not used, giveaway. Getting good at this. Not used, never gonna use. I'm gonna put it in the giveaway and it's just partly because I think it's the reason I bought it because I don't love the look of the skirt, but it it it's got this kind of pattern hacking thing, and I think it's intended. I don't. I think it's not that just that it gives you instructions for three different ways of doing the skirt. I think maybe there's some instructions for sort of how you can do your own pattern hacking. We provide the basics. You create the possibilities. Sizes XXX. To XXS to XXL. So I'm going to put that in the giveaway because I think that might be fun for someone to play with. I don't think I've ever used this one. Nope. Uh, McCall's with Love Sewing, M7906. Pleated skirts with different options. I think that can go to the charity shop. We're nearly there. Just a few more. Quick Sew Women's Dress and Top, this plus size pattern. I don't think I ever planned to make the dress. I think I did plan to make the top, but the envelope has never even been opened. Charity shop. This was one I ummed and about a little bit. I like the top. 
it's got a sort of peasant style almost gathered neckline and sleeves and the reason I'm not keeping it is a I would never make any of the other things and I've got another top pattern that's quite similar to that um I think I might have got it out and I might have even cut up some pieces so we'll get rid of that the bee blouse I thought about keeping this I think it's really pretty it's just not my style um it's got the sort of short sleeves uh and slightly longer sleeves with this kind of tie front. I think it's lovely. It's going in the giveaway. And finally, new look. K6575, produced with Sew Magazine. This sort of open front, loose summer top. Um, yeah, I quite like it. I don't think I'm ever going to make it. I'm putting that in the giveaway. So there we go. I have a pile to go to the charity shop. I have a pile that I'm putting in the bin. Right now they will go in the recycling. And I have a pile that may well appear as a giveaway on the channel at some point. What I will do, I think, is make them into little bundles according to size range and type of garment and try and aim for like three or four patterns in a bundle that will be relatively easy to post as a single bundle. And then at some point we'll do that as a giveaway on the channel okay that I think is all for the moment I feel like I've made a lot of progress this evening even though it's all been in one tiny corner or corner of the studio uh, next time what are we going to move on to next time I think we're going to move on I might just talk to you about what's on top of the filing cabinet next time and then we're going to move on to this very splendid cabinet here and I will talk to you about what's in there and we will also sort it out